the API gives you the, the flexibility to automate and to, to create your own tool with your own filters, with your own capabilities. Whereas whenever you are in the ads manager, if you, if you type an interest and click on something you found, then Facebook suggests other interests based on whatever you have clicked on. So if you wanted to expand your search, in audience, you can grab those five that are related to either foods or training and click on the suggestions button. And as I said before, it's better to target meaningful keywords than just broad stuff. Our guest today is Petru Jacob, the founder of Audiencer.io, a tool that helps marketers find better interest in the Facebook Ads Manager. In this conversation, we talked about how does Audiencer work and why it's better than using the Ads Manager user interface. We talked about interest-based targeting best practices, why you shouldn't use interest layering, some myths about Facebook Ads targeting, when to use lookalikes versus when to use interest, and much more. Welcome to the Ecom X Factor podcast, where it's all about launching and scaling your business using sales funnels, automations, and smart marketing. And now, please welcome your host, the founder of Ecom X Factor, Yaron Bin. Hi, Pitu. How are you? Hi, hi. I'm good. Thanks. And you? I'm great. Thank you so much for hopping on uh, this podcast. We already had like a 20 minutes conversation before we got started. So I'm mm-hmm. sure uh, we have a lot of interesting topics to talk about. Can you share a bit uh, about your background and what are you doing these days? Yeah, so uh, I'm the founder of Audiencer.io and my background started like a million years ago in 2005. I think if I recall correctly, I started my career as a web developer and have been a web developer till like 2014, 15 or something like that. And after that, I decided to, to build my own, uh, my own products. And I first started with, uh, with the countdown timer because my client back then used to, used to have this need a lot. Like I had to create pages, sales pages for them. And all of the sales pages had countdown timers on them. And I had to code every one of them. And I got pissed and I, uh, I created my own SaaS tool so I can use it <laughs> with, with my clients. Yeah. And trying to, to promote that, I started using the ads. And later on, after failing and failing, I think it was 2017 back then or early 2018. And someone was, uh, was talking about targeting and was asking about targeting in, in, a, in a post. And someone else replied something like, hey, you can target Russell Brunson. And I was like, what? you can really target like any keywords. And I started the researching because I, I was a geek and I started researching and I discovered uh, that Facebook actually has an API and provides a lot more than just what you see in the ads manager. So I went that way and obviously built my own tool because I needed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is how uh, Audiencer was born. Cool. And and Audiencer is, uh, how would you, like what is your elevator pitch for Audiencer? Elevator pitch. <laughs> We're like in the startup world now. Yeah. So Audiencer helps Facebook advertisers. So this is just for Facebook. It helps Facebook advertisers find the interest to target with their ads. And it does it with the spin as in whatever interests are found, we organize them in niches. So whenever you you go and create an audience with uh, with audience, and I have to, to tell it uh, the niche you're in. And this is how audience learns about you. And whenever you, you search something, you, you find interest and you save them to your, to your audience, audience are, keeps learning. So it's kind of a community-driven intelligence platform. Mm-hmm. And right now we have more than uh, our users, which is like maybe over 5,000 right now. They have uh, found over 200,000 interests and they're grouped in like, two or 3,000 niches. So mm-hmm. at this point with the searches and everything, audience are cranks about over 300,000 data points to make these recommendations. Yeah, so at this point, you you only need to, to log in onto the platform and tell it your niche and you're going to see hundreds in some cases, interest you can you can target. And from there, you can, you can dive deeper and go whatever you want with, uh, with the research. So as opposed to, to the classic way where you go to the ads manager and type, let's say, dogs. And from there, you see dogs, the interest, which is like 500 million people. 
And when you think that uh, Facebook has over 2 billion, 500 million from 2 billion, that's like one uh, quarter mm -hmm. of the entire population on Facebook. So you can, you can see that's fairly broad. Whereas if you, if your target market was like dog trainers, you just had to, you could target m m uh, meaningful keywords for them, like clicker training or confirmation shows or something like that. Something that only they know, because if you targeted dogs and that's it, then there's a high chance you could hit anybody. Mm -hmm. Like everybody has a dog. Everybody has someone who has a dog if they don't have a dog personally. Mm -hmm. So everybody loves dogs because they're cute animals. And mm -hmm. Cool. So basically, to clarify, so there are two major advantages in audience of I.O. in opposing to using the Facebook interest. So the first is when you go to the ads manager, you don't, you just don't have access to all of the interest. You need to yeah. use the, the API. And the second one, which I'd like to elaborate about, is the niches that are created by the users. So can you elaborate about how this is calculated? Yeah, so it's an algorithm that I personally developed. Mm -hmm. And basically, when you create an audience, which inside of audience, they work like buckets. So you you need to save your work for later because this uh, this tool is built with the, with the agency in mind. Mm -hmm. So if you get uh, one client and two clients and three clients, you kind of have to always do the research. And if the uh, if these clients are in the same uh, niche in the same category, then what you can do is to save your work. So I came with this concept of uh, of audiences. And when you create a, when you create an audience, uh, you tell audience the niche you're in, which basically is let's say it's like a tag. So mm -hmm. you tag your audience within a niche. So after that, whenever you do a search and save an interest, then audience is going to associate that interest with your niche and it calculates this based on what everybody searches and what everybody finds. So if you are in the dog's niche and you find, let's say confirmation show, confirmation show is going to have a big relevance score. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you, if you are in the same uh, dog niche and search, search for kitty cat stuff, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's going to have a, a very low relevance score. So you mm -hmm. can take that as an indicator of how, how relevant an interest is to your niche based on what, whatever the other people thought about that. Cool. And can you share a bit about like how are users in the platform using this and have they told you a bit about success stories, like any mind-blowing interests that they found that really created a big impact on their uh, targeting? Yeah, uh, I actually do have a couple of users who who strongly recommend them in their mentorship programs. And one user came to me and they said they're only using interest targeting. Mm -hmm. And that happened like uh, a year ago and they keep on using interest targeting alone until now. Do some users use also lookalikes as well? With yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, obviously. So, you know what the drill is uh, with Facebook, you, you always start with, uh, with interest targeting and then you expand to, to lookalikes. And basically, uh, interest targeting is, is useful when, whenever uh, there is something new or like either if the account is new and you don't have any data and you have to buy you have to buy it, you have to build on it. Then if you if you already have customers, but you want to expand to, to new demographics, then you have to use different targeting because if you keep using lookalikes, you're going to get the same type of demographic. So if you primarily targeted people in their 30s mm -hmm. and you you want to use lookalike to expand to to 40s and 50s you're not going you're not going to to do very well so yeah interest targeting is uh, is useful for me i based on my own experience uh, lookalikes are normally very expensive the, the cpms are very expensive and especially in these days with the whole ios update so yeah. i see that the performance with lookalikes is going a bit down so this mm -hmm. is why I prefer using also broad targeting and interest-based targeting. And yeah. before we hopped on the call, so we talked about the interest layering, which is yeah. uh, some sort of a method that uh, I see a lot of gurus teaching, which is basically narrowing down, uh, like taking one interest and then layering another in interest on top of that, et cetera, et cetera. What is your opinion about this? Yeah, I'm going to be short about this. Do this too much and you're going to have a bad time with Facebook. <laughs> so from uh, from my experience, if I try to layer down too many times, like mm -hmm. five, six times, then my CPMs went, went in the sky. So mm -hmm. interest targeting is, is definitely good, but you, you don't want to twist Facebook hands 
because they kind of have the algorithm kind of has to have some some space to move so you basically want to use one interest to interests but mm -hmm. don't don't try to to layer it too much mm -hmm. and uh, when when you suggested using two interests so you mean in one ad set and do you also yeah, yeah, yeah do you yeah. do you also look uh, click like there is an option like a, a check mark that you can give facebook the ability to expand based on the no, interest no, no. Mm -hmm. no i never use that because uh, whenever you click that expand your detailed targeting options uh, i think you're referring to that right <laughs> yeah exactly exactly mm -hmm. yeah if you look at the audience size it goes nuts i mean if you if you have an audience definition of like mm, two million people and you check that and you're in the United States, it goes to it goes it goes nuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it basically, uh, I, I think it removes all your targeting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And you you give uh, you give Facebook freedom to do whatever you want. I mean, mm -hmm. broad targeting is not bad. It works. It definitely works in uh, in many niches, especially if your if your reach is uh, is broad. Like if you're selling something that everybody uses, then there, there's no point in using interests to, mm -hmm. to target your your customers. But if your um, if your niche is uh, is narrower, mm -hmm. then your targeting should be a bit more specific. Mm -hmm. I agree. Because if you look at 10 people and try to, to hit one with a brick, you have one in 10 chance to, to hit someone. But mm -hmm. if you uh, if someone told you go left, like try to aim at those three, then mm -hmm. you'll have a higher chance to, <laughs> mm -hmm. to hit the one you want. For yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. And can you share a bit about the API, uh, building the, the product, uh, building audience IO, and how was the experience connecting to the Facebook API? And are there any hidden gems in the API that other people are overlooking because they just don't know about the yeah so while creating this product because i'm basically a web developer it was very very easy for me to to, to see the potential because the the api access is fairly linear where mm -hmm. you search and you get i think the limit is now the limit is now 500 so if, whenever you you perform a query and you you search for uh, for interest you get uh, you get 500 results tops and mm -hmm. from there, you can filter, you can uh, paginate, you can do whatever you want. And the API gives you the, uh, the flexibility to automate and to, to create your own tool with your own filters, with your own capabilities. Whereas whenever you are in the ads manager, if you, if you type an interest and click on something you found, then Facebook suggests other interests based on whatever you have clicked on. So if you want to go back, and do that search again you have to delete the interest from there mm -hmm. and if you want to go back to this interest you kind of have to have it in a notepad file or something so it makes it really hard and cumbersome to uh, to search for whatever you want so i insisted in uh in this and built in another thing that's super awesome uh, with audience or like if you are in this dog's niche and you have found uh, like 10 interests where five of them is uh, is pet foods related, like um, putting on meals, whatever. And five of them are training related, like confirmation show mm -hmm. and scissor meal and, and all of that. <laughs> if you wanted to expand your search in audience, you can grab uh, those five that are related to, to either foods or training and click on the suggestions button. I cannot show now because we're, we're only doing audio. Mm -hmm. But from there, Facebook gives you the possibility to expand only on the training side. So if you targeted uh, dog trainers with audience or you, had, uh, you have this, uh, this possibility to, to really go as deep as you want with, uh, with, your, with, with your search. And as I said before, it's better to target meaningful keywords than just mm -hmm. broad stuff. Like in this case, if you wanted to to target uh, trainers and you went for dogs, which is 500 million people worldwide, then that's not meaningful to you. Whereas mm -hmm. if you if you targeted some some sort of uh, slang like clicker training, or if you if you targeted web developers and you just targeted programmers, is also very broad. Whereas mm -hmm. if you went and targeted some slang some programming language like php or whatever then you have a higher chance to actually uh, reach out to mm -hmm. programmers how are the interests created on the back end for, for for facebook 
Yeah, you, you put it right. Uh, mm. Nobody knows. I think <laughs> not, not, <laughs> not of your Facebook. Facebook no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think uh, it's based on some signals. So mm. and also recency. I noticed mm. uh, because if you want to do uh, a test and uh, and check this out, you'll notice if you if you start researching on one direction, like I don't know, dropshipping, e-commerce, e whatever, you will start seeing ads not necessarily only from the sites you visited due to retargeting, but you're also going to see ads related to whatever you were searching and, and looking at. So Facebook, based on your activity on the, uh, the internet and based on your activity in their groups and on Facebook and whatever conversations you engage on, they probably have some signals, but I cannot give you details because I don't mm -hmm. because I don't have uh, mm -hmm. these details. But probably they have some some sort of waiting because if you just speak on Facebook about something, it's something. But if you go and buy products related to a topic, like courses, in this case of uh, mm -hmm. for for e-commerce then Facebook is probably going to give you more weight in that direction. So they tag you with this e-commerce interest because you are actively looking into e-commerce. But then if you switch your interest to like hiking because you you want to travel in the, uh, in the following months and you start looking at cruises and whatever, then Facebook is going to leave e-commerce aside for a bit mm -hmm. and give you back, uh, give you the, uh, the the ads for whatever you're interested in now. But if you then go to your ads, uh, to your uh, ad settings, yeah, mm -hmm. that's correct. And look at all the interests you are attributed, you will see stuff that uh, was relevant to you even five years ago. So, you, so they yeah. keep stacking them, mm -hmm. but they, they also have some sort of recency. So, Whenever you're doing interest targeting, there's a chance you're going to hit someone who was interested in that particular mm -hmm. topic, but no longer is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is it, so it, uh, it, mm -hmm. it's crazy because Facebook has this uh, this algorithm that's ever forever floating. Mm -hmm. So they don't have like anything fixed. <laughs> Whenever they they you do something, it attributes you with, a, with some sort of tag. <laughs> Quick favor guys, if you enjoy these shows and have been a listener for quite some time now, we would really, really appreciate it if you could take the time to give us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or whatever your preferred podcast app may be. Having lots of ratings and audience feedback makes our show become more visible across multiple platforms. And it also supports our mission of helping as many people as possible to become better marketers and better entrepreneurs. So if you're not driving and it wouldn't be dangerous, Pause this thing right now and give us an honest review over your podcast app. And we will love you even more than we already do. Thank you for taking the time and I hope you enjoyed the show. The, the crazy thing that really nobody knows what's going on is like a black box. I was in a workshop in Facebook in Israel and, and like three times during the day, one of the Facebook representatives were asked, how what what is the seed audience you should upload in order to have a good look alike and we got three different answers during the day one said the uh, 500 is enough another guy said 7000 is enough and then uh, one of the algorithm developers from dublin he said you have to have at least 70000 people in your seed audience so it was completely all over the show and then i realized yeah. that nobody really knows what's going on Nobody really knows because it's impossible to know. And think of this example. You have a seed, look, a seed audience for, for a lookalike and you have 1,000 people inside. What if from those 1,000 people, all of them uh, had a lot of things in common uh, regarding their, uh, their, their activities, like they're all, they were all doctors? Mm -hmm. There's a high chance you were going to hit doctors if you look like this. this. But if you look alike, if you're selling, uh, for example, some wellness product and 100 of your users were doctors, then 100 were some sort of other practitioners and another 100 other, uh, had other jobs, then if you look like that, your users, by not having a lot in, in common, even though your, uh, your seed audience is a thousand people, mm -hmm. you're going to get many buckets Mm -hmm. many types of uh, of users many types of jobs based on your seed look like so it it also has to be consistent not only big 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm not sure if I'm clear. So, no, it's clear. It, mm-hmm. All right. So mm-hmm. it's not just about numbers with Facebook. It's also about consistency mm-hmm. and the quality of your, your of your audiences. I wanted to ask you in regards to to interest. I saw that someone was promoting uh, a solution that you can using the API. You can see, assuming that your target you're using like ten interest, but you can see the results that are based on each interest. So let's say I have better results from one interest, uh, so I can get that data. But basically, I, I I see I saw someone that was promoting this, but it seemed like a scam, and I didn't believe in it, and I never heard of anybody uh, having this solution. So, do you know anything about this? I know I know who had the solutions, but I don't know I don't want to pronounce any name because it sounded like a scam for me too. Because <laughs> they they were promoting their software like giving you this uh, this kind of data, but what they weren't telling their users, and they had many customers complaining in their groups uh, because of this was that you had to keep your ads running for three days and had to have at least 500 impressions, which many people didn't have because Mm -hmm. they didn't have the budget because they were beginners and they were, uh, they were using $20 budgets and Mm -hmm. shutting down ads after one day and clustering very many, a lot of interests inside of a, of an ad so this was something available from facebook from the facebook apis but mm-hmm. it's uh, it's discontinued since like mm. 2019 i think i don't remember uh it's discontinued that's that's the point but it was inconsistent yeah, yeah. so you had you had to have this and the only place where you 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 could knew this it was from their api docs and nobody was telling the end customer that you had to have that mm-hmm. uh, amount of data in place to for for Facebook to to be able to to show you what interest performed. And the other bad thing about it was that, for example, if you targeted uh, Russell Brunson and Frank Kern, mm-hmm. and I was interested in both these topics and I bought your product, then Facebook would attribute both interests. So you you cannot mm. uh, possibly tell. Mm-hmm. or which of the of the interest is a yeah. winner mm-hmm. because okay. uh, since i'm interested in the marketing topic i know of both frank Kern and russell bronson mm-hmm. and i like both and i follow them i i, I watch their videos uh-huh. and they're both great guys and do a lot of things and have and help a lot of people so there's a high chance all of the interests in your ad set will get attributed uh-huh yes Okay, great. So I'm happy that I didn't I didn't go that down, down that rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I hear you yeah, talking. So about, the, sorry, go if, ahead. If, uh, if you want to to test interests, even though I I, I do not recommend you to test interests like that. So the 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 end goal is to have conversions and build on those conversions. So Facebook Facebook knows who, who to bring you to mm-hmm. to give you more conversions, not just to test interests and see what interest is, is best. Even though uh, knowing that one interest doesn't convert will help you remove it from uh, from your targeting. And I see I hear that you're talking a lot about the the audience size. And there were also a lot of hiccups uh, in the last two, few years about regarding is is it accurate? Is it not accurate? So do you suggest uh, looking at the audience size? Do you, do you find it accurate? Do you think it's relevant? Uh, like when you target uh, the audience size in your ad sets? Exactly. Yeah. So uh, the point with Facebook is you want to to not be very specific mm-hmm. because, and this happened to me, if, if I go uh, and target uh, very specific audiences like 100,000 people, then CPMs is, are going to, to kill me. Whenever you go too broad, same thing is happening because if you have a narrow niche and you leave Facebook with broad targeting, if you push enough enough cash, eventually it will find your mm-hmm. customers, but you will burn a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And there's also a chance Facebook is going to penalize you because they're showing your ads to people that are not interested. Mm-hmm. And because of that, they, they will consider your uh, your ads uh, mm-hmm. yeah, are relevant and they suck and you should go somewhere else and, uh, and do mm-hmm. advertising. And you, so if you, if you go only with uh, broad targeting and your niche is not that broad, you're going to... Uh, to be in either one of these cases. Either mm-hmm. Facebook is going to find 
your customers and burn a lot of money on the road or it is not going to to find them and start penalizing you eventually mm -hmm. ban you yeah interesting and, are and there... the other thing go ahead. sorry <laughs> the other go ahead. crazy thing uh, mm -hmm. thing that happens on facebook and uh, it happened to me last year it was at the end of uh, q3 if i recall mm -hmm. correctly so i had my targeting and facebook for two weeks they gave me shit results and i was feeling like my ads were not being shown to my customers to my mm -hmm. uh, target and this happened because i saw i was getting engagement from people and i started clicking because they were liking and i i, I was getting notifications and i mm -hmm. clicked on those people and i i saw i was getting um likes and uh, in game engagement in general from people who didn't have anything to do with mm -hmm. marketing like mm -hmm. i i got likes from plumbers uh -huh. i got likes from people who were posting politics stuff and it's totally unrelated to, to facebook and this happened because I was, even though I had my targeting in place, I was bidding against my competition and my competition was winning. Mm -hmm. So even though you have your targeting in place, you can still lose mm -hmm. just by losing those auctions and you don't know that. So you then go and, and say, okay, these interests aren't good enough. So I'm going to change my targeting, but that's not going to solve your problem because you change your targeting and you're going to again meet your competition <laughs> with the new interests and your new targeting. So best is to have to have your ads in place and try to do your best with uh, with copy and conversions and everything because if you do that and if your customers are genuinely happy with your products and in their experience on your on your page then you're going to win whereas if you don't have the right ads and the right copy and the right conversion rates sorry uh, you're going to to still lose even if you use look like test mm -hmm. 100 million interests you're still going to lose yeah for sure it's all about uh, having the good offer a, a, a great offer yeah. offers that yeah. can an offer that can be resisted and finding yeah. and pr promoting it to the correct audience um, exactly you said it you, you said it well i think the offer is the the one that counts the most let's talk about currently the offer in audience io so do you do you you guys offering at the moment a lifetime uh, offer am i correct yeah it's a one time payment for, uh, with audience sir it's 199 dollars but as a as a great incentive right mm -hmm. after people sign up which uh, by the way i have uh, two types of memberships there mm -hmm. is the free tier which is limited and you don't have access to everything obviously and then there's uh, the the paid tier that gives you everything Mm -hmm. So the flow is like this. Usually people uh, uh, sign up as a free users just to test the waters and stuff like that. And after they uh, they sign up for 30 minutes, they see a flash offer, which is $99 instead of $199, which is half the price. Mm -hmm. And people usually go with that because mm -hmm. it's a great incentive. Nice. So you're incorporating the countdown on elements that you learned in 2013. <laughs> yeah, the, scar <laughs> yeah, scarcity. the scarcity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, it's still great value for the money because mm -hmm. if you think about it, only if you, if, you, if you target the wrong people with mm -hmm. one ad set one time, you can, you can, uh, you can lose more than 200 mm -hmm. bucks. Yeah, for sure. So, and, and if you and find it's going to help you a lot, especially if you have uh, an e-commerce store, if you have um, a general store with multiple uh, audiences, like if you wanted to target this demographic, then that dem demographic, or if you have multiple stores, or if you have, if you are uh, an agency, an e-commerce agency, or if you were uh, a freelancer in the e-commerce space, and you you always onboard new car, new clients to uh, to your uh, in, in your business then mm -hmm. you kind of have to, uh, to do your this targeting research all the time so it's it's great value for the money mm -hmm. i agree and i mean it's, it's a no-brainer and if you find if you find a good interest uh, in audience io that you couldn't have found in the ads manager and you start yeah. uh, pushing money and see conversion so you're going to have a very yeah. very yeah. positive roi pretty yeah and pretty get your fast. money back in, in an instant exactly exactly um one last question in regards to precautions in using interest, do you find based on, on the many feedbacks that you're getting from your clients that interest might be less relevant in tier three countries in opposite to tier one countries? 
probably they have more data if you go into the tier one countries. Mm -hmm. But I think Facebook uses kind of the same signals mm -hmm. uh, everywhere. But what I noticed for me, at least, I, I know I, I, I tried at some point running a very broad ads, like with no targeting at all and going mm -hmm. worldwide. And uh, what I noticed is Facebook, because, so because of the, the ad settings, where you bid the lowest mm -hmm. is going to give, if you give it the possibility to spend money on the lowest quality users is going mm -hmm. to do so. Yeah. So at some point, one of the ad sets, I had the budget of like 50 bucks a day. Mm -hmm. And I know it was sending swarms of traffic mm -hmm. from uh, Nigeria and Brazil. Mm -hmm. And from there, everybody was signing up. So it was optimizing very well. But while I was optimizing for signups, I was mm -hmm. expecting sales and not getting sales because Facebook was so perfectly mm -hmm. optimizing for, for signups, but was sending uh, the kind of traffic that didn't even click one yeah. time after signing mm -hmm. up. So it was meaningless traffic. But nonetheless, <laughs> optimized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this is what, something crazy. Like, I mean, many people say, is that you should optimize for for video for view content at the beginning or add to cards. But I mean, if you're optimizing for add to cards, you're going to get add to cards. You're not going to see a purchase. That this yeah, is yeah, and it's crazy. And and Facebook also recommends this. And in theory, it's great because the more you optimize for uh, for page views, mm -hmm. the more traffic you're going to get, and that traffic is supposed to increase in quality. But mm -hmm. from my experience. It never happens. Yeah. So if you're optimizing for view contents, you're only going to get view contents. Exactly. And this this yeah. is like a, this this is a great ending note for for the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're optimizing, yeah. for, if you're not optimizing for the money, you won't going to see. You're not going to see exactly. any money. <laughs> exactly. Cool. Exactly. Is there is there anything that I else that you would like to share? Anything that I forgot to 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 ask? Never rely a hundred percent on Facebook. Yeah, I, I'm not relying 100% on Facebook either. So right now I'm uh, I'm on a, on a tour mm -hmm. to to get new partners. So basically, uh, this technique uh, I heard of it from uh, from Russell Brunson. I think mm -hmm. it was the first one, but he didn't in, in, invent this. Uh, it's called Dream 100, and basically you you go and reach out to whoever already has a commercial re a relationship mm -hmm. with your audience. So. If in your space, there are people who sell courses, apps, whatever, products, mm -hmm. influencers, all of those people you can work with. So all, all you need to do is to, uh, to reach out to them and do a deal with them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, surprisingly, it was a surprise for me. A lot of them say yes. Mm -hmm. Say yes, I want to do business with you. And that's crazy. Cool. Yes, it's also. Yeah. Uh, I mean, your your uh, we our communication was was great, and uh, I I see that you're building those partnerships, and I also think it's also relevant for e-commerce store owners, like influencer marketing. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the technique yeah. the technique is similar. You have to be persistent. You have to off, yeah. offer value up front. You have to be polite. Um, exactly. And it makes a lot of sense, especially when uh, the CPMs in and the competition in Facebook is becoming higher and higher and a lot of small brands are, are banned and they are outbid. Yeah, and you know, you know, I, I think you remember that day when everything was going fine and then pff, you you got banned. I mean yeah, <laughs> day. Uh, it happened yeah. to so many days. It happened to me and so when, many times. When this when this happens, all your sales go below sea level. Mm -hmm. Like you're bankrupt in a second. Mm -hmm. So I don't see any reason why you you or anyone mm -hmm. would uh, drive traffic only from one store. So the best way is to have multiple channels. Mm -hmm. I agree. As the many as you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Pitu. So we're going to share a link to the to audience.io in the show notes, but it's pretty easy. It's audience.io. Uh, yep. not, not rocket science to find the domain. Uh, where can people mm -hmm. reach out to you? Uh, are you active on any on social media? Uh, either Facebook, Petri Jacob, or uh, support at uh, audiencer.io or Petru at uh, audiencerpartnership.com awesome. if you want to reach out and cool. do business. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Great. So have a lovely day moving forward. And thank you so much for sharing uh, the value and insights. All right. You too have a great day and thank you for having me. Awesome. Sure. Hi guys, this is Johan again. Just a few more things before you take off. 
Number one, if you want to learn more about e-commerce and marketing, make sure you check out our YouTube channel, which is called Ecomex Factor Official. Number two, check out our Facebook group, which is called Ecomex Factor Marketing and E-commerce Mastermind. This is a great place to ask questions and connect with other business owners. And last but not least, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to share it with your friends and colleagues. Plus, leave a review at your favorite podcast app.